This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So here we are, starting to look at the accounting standards now. And um, what we're going to go through and do first of all is a bit of revision, sort of ease you back into it, because your brought forward knowledge from F7 is vitally important. You can't neglect it. So before we start getting involved in any of the complex new standards that you've got from P2. Let's go through first of all and make sure that you're happy with some of the basics from F7. Because if you master those, then you're going to do really well, whether that's in a groups question. Because don't forget, not only does a groups question test group accounts, but it also tests some accounting standards knowledge as well with regards to the computations. But it also then feeds through into question two or question three, uh, whereby you have a mix of accounting standards to go through there and deal with. So first one that we're going to go through and look at is property planted equipment well we're going to look at PPE in this video but be aware PPE and IS 16 is all part of your your tangible non-current assets okay so items that you can physically touch land and buildings plant and machinery motor vehicles office equipment etc uh, in the following videos we'll go through there and look at borrowing costs uh, so remember if you take out a loan and there is interest on the loan you must capitalise the interest as opposed to expensing it, provided you meet some criteria. Uh, we then look at the accounting treatment of government grants. Uh, so looking there that you receive money from the government to do with the, the purchase or to help you fund the purchase of PPE. How do we account for that government grant? And then their investment property. So a little bit of an aside, if you like, away from property, plant and equipment, a separate line item within your non-current assets, looking there at your investment property. Okay, so land or buildings that you have there for capital appreciation purposes or for rental purposes, isn't it? Okay, so let's go through, uh, have a look first of all, the focus on PPE, IS16. Uh, you do not need to know the accounting standard number. Uh, if you do, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. And whatever you do, don't try and guess what the accounting standard number is and state it within the exam. Uh, it's not worth it. You don't get any credit for it so so don't worry so again whenever you look at accounting standard the best way to think about it is always to think about your initial recognition subsequent recognition and then disposal so initial recognition subsequent measurement i suppose i should say and then go through there and looking at de-recognition so when we're looking at ppe we're looking at what you do when you acquire the asset uh, how do you initially recognize it the subsequent treatment is with regards to the depreciation and essentially the revaluation. And then the derecognition is the disposal when you calculate the profit or loss on disposal. Isn't it? It's as simple as that. Okay. Uh, so again, bits and pieces. I don't think it's anything new, is it, in terms of what you look at with regards to your initial recognition. So you look at what you've paid, uh, add on your directly attributable costs of getting it to its location and its condition, isn't it? So you're looking there. Uh, any conversion costs of, of converting or, or if you like constructing, I should say, uh, that item of property, plant and equipment. Uh, you're also looking there at any import duties that you may have to pay to get the goods uh, over the, the border into the country. Uh, likewise, in terms of its condition, uh, you're looking there, aren't you, at uh, preparation fees of, of the site uh, and going through there and looking at installation fees. Remember, you cannot include the costs of any errors that were made in the initial assessment of, of being able to, to construct that asset. Okay, uh, Then what you've got, I think a little bit more relevant, I suppose, now with regards to P2. They do tend to test more complicated aspects at P2 of the accounting standards that you've seen in F7. Uh, so you've got there the cost to dismantle, the cost to restore, uh, and the key bit there is that that is at present value, isn't it? So what you've got there, maybe you have, is it an oil rig? You need to go through there and you need to dismantle that oil rig in 20 years time. So what you do there is if there's a legal obligation or a constructive obligation, then you credit the provision, don't we? And here the debit is taken to the cost of the asset, isn't it? Okay. Key bit there is that you debit the cost, credit the provision, and you work that out based upon present value. Uh, and then don't forget when you've got the provision that you then need to unwind that provision 
So unwind it up to its final or its terminal value. And any adjustment that you then make subsequently goes, isn't it, to your finance cost. So that was a, a tricky bit that you see in F7 and it still gets seen there within P2. Okay, You initially record it at present value. So you add it onto the cost and then depreciate the cost as normal. And then the provision, you unwind it, don't we, over the life. Okay, You apply the discount rate to the value of the outstanding liability of the provision. Okay, The movement goes to your finance costs. Uh, once you've capitalised the asset, remember you've got a choice, haven't we, with regards to is it the cost model and the revaluation model. Again, I'm not too worried about the, the cost model. I think the focus within the exam is likely to be the, the revaluation model, isn't it? So when we revalue it, we revalue it to fair value. And then we go through there and depreciate that revalued asset over its remaining useful life, isn't it? Uh, I've just put in a couple of facts and points there to, to consider. Uh, in terms of the revaluation, we keep it up to date, don't we? Uh, so remember, we, we, there's no set rules like we used to have in UK standards about how specifically after how many years you have to revalue. The key bit here is that you just need to make sure that the fair value is faithfully representing the transaction. Okay, uh, So in order to go through there and faithfully represent it, we need to ensure there that there's no material difference. If that's the case, if there's no material difference, then the fair value that we have is reliable. If there is a material difference, then we need to ensure that we update the value to its up-to-date fair value. If it's a change that's only small, we don't need to worry about it. Again, we need to have a consistent policy for each class of asset. So we tend to choose the revaluation model, don't we, there for land and buildings, and everything else is held under cost model. Uh, we revalue at open market value, don't we? So open market value now is determined by fair value, and we have a specific standard that, that deals with the fair value. Uh, and then the key bit, I think, is that we depreciate the revalued asset, yes, less its residual value, over its remaining useful life. Okay, uh, And then you've got the excess depreciation adjustment to go through there and consider. Okay, uh, So what you've got, that's essentially what we're going to go through and look at now. Okay. Uh, I've chatted already. I probably bored you into submission with it already. Uh, so let's try and keep you a little bit interested and focus upon the numbers. Uh, so two examples that we've got there. Uh, first one says, calculate the amount to be shown in the financial statement of Panama for the year ended the 31st of December 2015. Okay, Here we have a revaluation increase. Okay. So it says there, Panama bought. Start again. Panama bought an item of property, plant, and equipment. So if I can get my teeth back in, for eighty million dollars on the first of January, twenty twelve. Uh, the asset had a zero residual value, so I'm taking pity on us and making it easier, and was to be depreciated over its estimated useful life of twenty years. Okay, so eighty million, twenty years is at four million dollars per annum. Okay. Uh, on the 1st of January 2015, so the start of the current financial year, it was revalued to its fair value of $95 million. Okay, So there's been a revaluation. We need to account for the revaluation in the year. And the gain goes through the comprehensive income, doesn't it? And then given that the revaluation was at the start of the year, we'll need to work out the depreciation for the current year. And then see if there is any reserve transfer that we can make for any excess depreciation. So there's quite a lot, isn't there, to go through there and consider. Okay. So let's put into practice what we've just spoken through there with regards to a bit of a recap in terms of PPE. And the focus here is on revaluation. You'd be surprised how many times within the group accounts question numerically uh, that you see revaluations appear. It's quite quite a few times. So what you've got here, first of all, is we're going to look at revaluation increase. Uh, and it wants us to show the amount in the financial statement. So SFP, profit or loss, OCI, if we're thinking about revaluation increases. And likewise, as well, your statement of changes in equity, any potential revaluation adjustments with regards to the excess depreciation, isn't it? Uh, so what we've got there is that the year ended the 31st of December 2015. 
Uh, what have we got? Panama bought an item of property, plant and equipment for 80 million on the 1st of January 2012. Uh, zero residual value, so making it a bit easier for you and depreciated over 20 years. So we would have an asset that is depreciated $4 million every single year, isn't it? The 80 divided by the 20. Uh, 1st of January 2015, so is that the very start of the accounting year? We were valued the asset, is it to 95 million? Okay, so we need to go through there and tell the story of how we get that asset from the 80 million uh, up to its revalued amount of 95 at the start of the year. And then we need to finish the story by showing how that is then subsequently treated this year, uh, i.e. how it is then depreciated. And is there any excess depreciation that we need to process through a reserve transfer? Okay, so let's go through. Uh, have a play around with it. Uh, standard working, like we saw, I think, within the, the foreign currency earlier on, the way that, that I put it in is that I have a column. Is it there for the narrative? I have a historic cost column. I have a revaluation column. And then we look at the surplus column. So what we've got there, was it we looked at the cost? Was that on the 1st of the 1st, 2012? And that cost was 80 million, wasn't it? Uh, the depreciation that we're going to charge is the 80 divided by the 20 years, wasn't it? Now we just need to make sure that we get the carrying value to the first of the first is it 2015 isn't it okay so it's four million per annum how many years worth of depreciation will that be well all of 2012 13 and 14 okay just be careful we don't include 15 because that's the uh, at the start of this year isn't it okay the revaluation took place at the start of 2015 so we will have only depreciated the asset for 12, 13, 14. Okay. So does that give me three lots of four, which is 12? Uh, 80 less the 12 is that there as 68 million, isn't it? Okay. Uh, the asset was then revalued, I think, was it up to 95 million? Okay. Uh, let's just check. Yep. Asset was revalued to its fair value of 95 million. So 95 less 68, that means that my revaluation surplus is 27. And that's what you see there within your other comprehensive income, isn't it? Okay, the revaluation in the year is there as 27. What we then need to go through and do is we then need to process adjustments this year to get me to my carrying value at the 31st of December 2015. So what we have there with regards to the depreciation is that you depreciate the revalued amount of 95 over the remaining life, which is there is it as 17 years, okay? It's a horrible number. Don't expect always to get nice numbers within the exam. To keep it simple, round it to one decimal place. So 95 less the 5.6 gives me 89.4. Everybody happy with that there? Okay, the asset was 20 years depreciated originally. Three years have gone by the start of 2015, so there's 17 left. 95 divided by 17 gives you 5.58235294, uh, which is 5.6. Uh, so that 5.6 is what goes to the statement of profit or loss. The 89.4 is what you have on the statement of financial position, isn't it? Okay. Now, what you've got to be careful of is there is a reserve transfer, isn't there? We've now charged 5.6 of depreciation when previously we only charged 4. Okay. So what we can do there is the excess is that there of 1.6. That can be treated as a reserve transfer. So that will go through my statement of changes in equity. 
as your reserve transfer. Uh, 27 less than 1.6. Does that give me the... Is it 25.4? Okay, again, that 25.4 is what you then see on the SFP as part of your other components of equity. Wow! That's a lot that's gone on there, isn't there? Yeah, you're probably, your head's probably scrambled. Uh, so let's just go through and show how that all appears within the financial statements. So within the statement of financial position, uh, you're looking at your non-current assets. You've got your property, plant and equipment. Uh, did we have, was it 90 or 89.4, wasn't it? on the SFP. So you've got the $89.4 million. Uh, within the equity section, uh, you've got your other components of equity. So within the equity section on your other components of equity, you have the, is it 25.4? Everybody happy with that there? Okay. Uh, if we go through there and then think about your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So within your profit or loss, you have your depreciation, don't we? So that was the 95 million divided by 17, which gave me, was it $5.6 million? And then in other comprehensive income, you have your gain on revaluation. The gain on revaluation that we had was 27, wasn't it? Okay, you can see it there. So your gain on revaluation is 27. Okay. Everybody with it? Yeah, a lot going on. And then if we go and look at our statement of changes in equity, then what you've got there is you've got your retained earnings, you've got your other components of equity, you have your brought forward figures, which for retained earnings we don't know. Other components of equity will say, well, it was zero, let's just say, at the start of the year. Uh, you've then got the figures from your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So that's whereby you put in, is it the profit for the year in retained earnings? In other components of equity, you had, was it your gain from your other comprehensive income, hasn't there? Uh, then what you've got is your reserve transfer. So was the reserve transfer, was it one point something? 1.6? So we take 1.6 from your other components of equity and transfer it to your retained earnings. So that's the 25.4 that you've seen on the SFP. And then we don't know what the retained earnings are because we don't know the opening retained earnings and we don't know the profit for the year figure from your total comprehensive income. Okay, there we go. So from that working, you can deduce an awful lot of information, can't you? Okay, It's important not to just be able to do the working, but also to know where those figures go. So what I want you to do is I want you to work that working again by yourself. Make sure that you're happy with it. And then once you are, you can come back and join us in the next video when we start to look at an revaluation, or I should say maybe an impairment uh, or a revaluation downwards.